my dearest Annabelle, it is with great excitement and also longing that I pen this correspondence to you. This day has been full of drill, drill, and more drill. We are learning how to march in line and carry our muskets and bayonets. I have made some new acquaintances. I've been playing chess with a chap from out west named Ernst. I'm, I'm pretty tired, but I never tired, too tired, to write to my sweet, sweet Annabelle. Oh, how I have missed your sweet smile and your soft hands. But don't you worry. This war will soon be over as soon as it has begun, and then I will be back with my love, and we finally can wed. I put pen aside, for tomorrow we are on the march. Forever yours, Albert. My sweet Albert, you are so greatly missed by me and so many others. Almost all the boys have left since you departed. The only one left is our neighbor, Frank Haskins. Oh, how I wish that we were able to wed before you left for war. However, it is your duty. I am mighty lonely here without you, desperately missing you, Annabelle. My loveliest Annabelle. Oh, how wonderful it was to read your letter today. Yes, Frank, my dear old friend. We uh, used to be rivals in high school, but we have, we've grown past such those silly days of school. Yeah. Anyway, we marched 20 miles today through the densest mud you have ever laid eyes on. I even lost one of my boots. My, my chess friend, Ernst, has, uh, has come down with a pretty bad cough. The doc thinks it might be typhoid. But I mustn't bog you down with such unpleasantries. I need to go eat my mess of beans and get some rest. We march on tomorrow. I miss thee more with every sleep, but every night I lay my head on the ground is one night closer to being with you. Love always, Albert. Dear Albert, I cannot fathom what you must be going through in your journeys. Things here have become oh so treacherous. We have been losing people here too. You know Charles, our butler. Well, he has gone to work for the Willards just up the road. So we labor all day brewing our own tea and setting our own tables. Thank goodness the cook Ida is still here. What punishing times we live in. Frank Haskins has just been a blessing by bringing over fresh strawberries each day. My candle is fading, so I must go. Yours, Annabelle. My dearest Annabelle, the thought of you lifting even a delicate and soft finger makes me want to win this war as soon as we can so that we might be reunited. Unfortunately, the boys will have to fight without me for a few days. Yesterday, we were ambushed by the enemy, and I took a mini ball through the left leg and the right arm, so I'm riding with my left hand. I also haven't had more than a few beans each day for the past week. But do not worry for me, my love, for you will heal my wounds quickly. And we will be together. With warmest regards, Albert. Albert, I too have felt the pain of this great war. Without Charles here, I had to fetch my own raisins from the kitchen, and I stubbed the big toe on my left foot. The pain was absolutely dreadful. I had to lie on the sofa for hours. Thankfully, the neighbor, Frank Haskins, brought over some ice and a slice of his mother's strawberry pie each day this week. Frank held the ice to my toe while I ate my slice of pie. I think I will recover in time. Annabelle. Sweet Annabelle, my arm is healing nicely. However, I smell that my leg has had some setbacks. I tried to make the field last week, and it was struck again in the same place. The doc says there could be an infection. I'm glad that our dear friend Frank is there to help you. I owe him such a debt of gratitude when I return. Only yours, Albert. My dear friend, that is dreadful to hear about your leg. My legs have been in pain all week because we danced all weekend at the Willard's barbecue. Frank is so light on his feet, I just couldn't keep up. Your friend, Annabelle. Annabelle, I'm sorry. You were dancing with Frank all weekend? 
I do, I do, I do, I do appreciate his help, but I, I should be home soon. My, my leg, though, has turned a shade of green that can only be described as mildly bioluminescent. I, I do not even know what that means. Your fiance, Albert. Annabelle? Uh, are, are you still there, Annabelle? To whom it may concern. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Frank and I were visiting his family on the coast. It was just dreadfully cold out there. Worst vacation ever. But Frank kept me warm. K okay, bye. Annabelle. Excuse me, Annabelle. Um, could you, uh, could you please put Frank on the letter for a moment? I, I would very much, very much like to correspond with him. Albert. Dear Albert, this is Frank. What's up? Thanks, Frank. Dear Frank, why are you moving in on my girl? You, you know we were engaged before I left for war, and, and now I hear you were taking her to visit your family. Also, why, why are you not fighting? Albert. Dear Albert, I have asthma. Sincerely, Frank. Dear Frank, I have a glowing leg that smells like cabbage from a rotten corned beef sandwich, and yet I still made three runs at the enemy yesterday. You know what? I do not need this. Sincerely, yours, Albert. Dear Albert, fine, Frank. Dear Frank, fine, Albert. Dear Albert, fine, Frank. Dear Frank, whatever. Albert. Dearest y'all, come on, Frank. Let's get off this letter. You can take me to brunch at the Willoughby's. Fare thee well, Annabelle. Dear Annabelle, he started it. No cap, Frank. <laughs> Dear Annabelle, it is with a heavy heart that I accept the termination of our engagement. Please tell your father that I do apologize for not speaking with him first. I know that you will be in good hands with Frank. I will be okay as well. I have taken yet another mini ball, but ended up in a hospital where I met a nurse who I will be asking for her hand in marriage. Her name is Bella Ann. She is a wonderful person, similar to you, except younger and much prettier, with a sweeter smile and softer hands. Lost to you forever, Albert. Dear Albert, excuse me, Annabelle.